All right, so we are now recording and we are officially ready to approve the minutes of May 11th. I thought you did a stellar yeah, job, Sheila. Oh, she, yeah, okay. She has thank you, yes, thank you, Sheila. I did not see anything that needed changing. Okay. Does anybody have any comments, uh, Looks Jim? Looks good to me. Okay, so I think um, that we just need a motion to accept. Make that motion. Is there a second? Second. Okay, and um, uh, all those in favor is everybody, uh, Sheila, Jim, Cynthia, and I can vote on them um, because we were present at the meeting. And I'm assuming that we are all voting. Aye. Affirmative. Right. Okay. So, so noted in that everyone voted in the affirmative. Okay. Uh, on to welcoming the new trustee, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Bob Klinger is right over there. Bob, you want to tell us something about yourself or introduce uh, yourself? To us? Sure. This sure. The time back. Pardon? Can we call you Robert, Rob, Bob? What do you uh, prefer? I own my own business for many years. I've been called a lot worse than any of those. <laughs> so, um, Bob is fine. Okay. So, yeah, my my wife and I have owned land in Waitley since about 2007, 2008. Um, and then we recently, about three years ago, built a house uh, up here above um the Waitley Inn off of Haydenville Road, Dickinson Hill Road. Yeah. Um, we've been in the valley for about 23, 24 years. We used to live down in East Hampton. Uh, very happy to have moved up here to Waitley. So like it, like it very much. Glad to have you, Bob. Rob. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna call you Rob so we don't confuse it with Bob. That's fine. <laughs> That, that's fine. So I'm, I'm happy to hear my background, educational background, is uh, undergraduate in mechanical engineering, master's degree in material science. Um, I'm used to running what I would call small to medium-sized projects. Uh, so that, I think, was part of the reason why Jim approached me about uh, being a trustee and just sort of helping out. I'm anticipating that the majority of my focus will be on the physical plan of the building. So, um, and we'll address some of that in a moment. <laughs> yes, that's, that's fine. I'm, oh, I'm happy to, God. yeah, I'm, I'm happy to help in, in whatever way I can. So that's why I'm wearing the mask. <laughs> no. Oh, is it still smell? Well. I showered today. <laughs> it's uh yeah. Yes, it does. Okay. Okay. Well, welcome aboard, Bob. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, welcome. Okay. Jim, we're going to move on to financial report. Okay. Just, Bob, for your information, I usually will email out the financials that I get from the town treasurer uh, once a month. Uh, okay. This, is, this is, represents the month of June, which was the last month of fiscal FY21. So, doing the detail didn't make an awful lot of sense. I'm just going to give you what the final number is. And we ended up um, with a surplus of $2,656, which will go back to the town. However, there may be some bills coming in in July that will be credited against that. So we try to get it as close to zero as we can. We don't want to run over. So this is, prob this is a very good number to have right now, because I'm sure there's going to be some stragglers coming in. Okay. okay. Um, the, we, I also report on our, what we call our endowment account, our trustees account. And, uh, that has not changed from last month. I'll have a detailed list for you, um, on our next meeting. Okay. 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 Any, any questions on the financial report? 2656. That's pretty good. Cause considering that we have had three times that amount in other years. I so. believe. A thousand of that was what was encumbered to replace the kiosk sign that's outside. Oh, yeah. so it's sixteen fifty six, technically speaking. Technically, that's pretty good. 
Not yet. And, and we're still holding money for the architect as well. Yes. There we go. Okay. okay. All right, Cindy, it's your turn. Time for okay. your- So um, the biggest thing that's come up since my director's report sent out was when I came in to work today, Matt, brought my, uh, to my attention the fact that half of the rug in the community room is saturated with water. Due to all of the rain that we had, um, the storm drain must have gotten backed up and the, and the results was that water started seeping into the building uh, along the edge of the window that faces Melissa, uh, Melissa Caldwell's former house the paint has started to bubble. And um, so this morning, Bob Smith, Bob Klinger, Jim were here. Keith Bardwell came over with the cherry picker. They cleaned up the eaves. They cleaned around the drain. The town, we're supposed, to, we're going to be instructed by the town of how to file an insurance claim to have that covered by the insurance to repair it. Um, Angie carpet cleaners, I'm still waiting on them to come to, that might be them now knocking on the door to suck up the extra water out of the carpet. Last week when we were here for the friends meeting, Cynthia and I did smell what we thought was cat urine. And I thought perhaps a cat had peed into one of the compressors, but maybe this was the beginning of it, but we looked everywhere and we couldn't find anything. Okay. So that's where we stand right now. Okay, I just want to interrupt you for one second. We are not going to file an insurance claim. The town has a thousand dollar deductible. We don't at this point believe okay. that the immediate remediation is going to is going to um, um, be worth filing the claim. So we're gonna we'll we'll eat the um, cost of the um, immediate remediation, and then we'll assess um, if we have to come in with with um, something more professional or something. Okay. So Adam, Adam just did just get here to suck up the extra water. He's got a couple of industrial size fans that he's going to loan us for a couple of days to blow in there to really make sure that it dries out. Before Matt left, he set up the three, thank goodness we still had the three dehumidifiers down in the basement. So those have been set up and they've been running all day. So that was sort of the most urgent thing then that happened this morning. But okay. as of right now, it's under control. Um, going forward um, with my director's report, pretty much um, everything. I mean, Rebecca's working out really well. The one change that from a report is Matt has actually been cleared to return to work. And today was his first day back here at work here at the library. I was wrong there was a friends meeting this month and we'll get um i'm sure we'll get to that okay. um i tried to keep all of you in the loop in terms of um what happened with matt and uh, we really can't discuss the but i've sent you and i sent you just this afternoon uh the latest um doctor's report from aeiou that's that he can continue can begin to work again with no restrictions so was and, it okay that I said that he came back to work today or should yeah. I not have said that? No, no, that's fine. That's fine. Cause that, cause everybody knew from earlier. Um, we just can't discuss why he was out. Correct. Okay. Um, I got our CW Mars assessment for this coming fiscal year and it's actually less than it has been. And the main reason for that is we're assessed about 10 cents for each item that scanned through the circulation desk. And since we were closed for part of the year, and then when we were just doing curbside pickup, people were just getting maybe two or three books. So I'm sure next year we'll be back up to where we were because now that we're open again for browsing, people are taking books out by the handfuls. Um, despite having been called several times, Andrea has not responded about coming to doing the landscaping hmm. i and spoke I with yeah I oh, sp go ahead, spoke, yeah i spoke with andrea on uh in front of my house i stopped her on the road um and this was oh boy must have been a month ago and um the next time that she goes by my house i'll stop her on the road again because she said she was going to do it she probably forgot 
All right. And I don't know if that would have made a difference with the flooding or not for no. downstairs. No. 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 Um, there was one more bill that came through for the Bartlett Tree Service for the maintenance plan. Mm -hmm. So that I'm submitting that tonight um, for tomorrow, and that will be under the FY21 budget because there was still money in maintenance to cover it. And that was for how much again, please? $125. $125 is their first visit? For the first visit, we're going to be billed quarterly, so they're going to do four visits total for the year. Okay. Um, I would just like to, oh, in reference to the tree, Jim has been uh, constantly taking care of it and watering it since it was planted, and I just wanted to thank Jim for his endless amount of time that he spends on the library. Thank you. It should be good and watered today. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so I told you about the community room flood. The CWMR Circulation Committee has voted to change wording on their um, billing notices that are sent out to patrons. So starting on August 1st, if you are billed for lost I library items, it's actually going to tell you right on the bill that because you've been billed for lost library items, your CWMARS account is blocked. Please contact your library about fixing that error. So that way, and that's nothing that I or Rebecca can change or the trustees could vote to change. That's a policy that is CWMARS policy that once you're billed for an item, your account is automatically blocked to prevent you from being able to then check out items at other libraries. You also wouldn't be able to download items off of Overdrive to read on your tablet or your iPad or your Kindle. So hopefully that will help people understand why their accounts are blocked. And then the only other thing is, um, Rebecca and I are going to have the book sale this year, and we would like to have volunteers who would be willing to help us by signing up for an hour or two of their time to just sit up. I'm hoping we'll be able to have it downstairs in the community room because it would be less involvement with moving everything and we won't have to move everything outside. So I'm just hoping that we could have that Rebecca and I could get two or three or as many people who would like to volunteer as possible to just sit at the door and collect the money as the people come in and out. Um, we have people who are willing to donate brown paper bags so that they can have bags to carry their books out in. And Oh, I believe Sheila has a question, Sheila. I'm volunteering and my oh. husband will be here to help you haul some books okay. in the morning. <laughs> I'll help too, Cynthia, Cindy. Okay, Cheryl. thank you. When is it, Cindy? It will be the last, I'm hoping to do it the last Saturday and Sunday of September. That coincides with the fall festival? Yes. Okay. And Which hopefully... Oh, go ahead, Bob. It is, it is a go. There will be a fall festival this year. As far as we know, they're planning on being able to have it be a go. Okay. So that's the 25th, 26th of September? Yes. Correct. Okay. Cynthia, do you have a question? Um, you had mentioned last week at the Friends meeting that uh, for people who are friends of the Waitley Library, they could come to a preview Friday night. Yes. They, if you are a friend of the Waitley Public Library, you can can come to the pre-sale on Friday night before too. That way you get first pick of the books. Great idea, great idea. Are you advertising that? I will. Yeah, and, and you know, stress that if you're a friend of the Waitley Library, you get the uh, preview. A preview of the stuff we no longer want. <laughs> right. And it, I mean, it's a great way to try to get friends to join the library, even if it's just because they want to come to the book sale ahead of everybody else. Mm -hmm. Are you are, are you just uh, giving a donation? Is this going to be donation kind of thing? Or are you pricing the books? Or Well, I was hoping to do a lot of other libraries have done this and they've been successful with $5 and you fill a bag for $5. And then, or if you want two bags, two bags for $8 and just take as many books as you can fit in your bags. 
or if someone just wants one book, they can make a donation of however much they think. Well, that, since since you and Rebecca are are um, leading the charge on that, I guess that would really be up to you how you do it. Okay. All right. Anything else, Cindy? I Any believe. Oh yes, there's a place called Roundabout Books in Greenfield that will come and get our books after the book sale that don't sell. He does a lot of local libraries and whatever he can't sell, he does recycle. So nothing will really go to waste. Okay, have you have you been in touch with him? Yes. And I'm Perfect. just we're just waiting to coordinate when Perfect. he can come after the sale. Okay. Very good. Um, I don't have anything else. All right, any questions for Cindy? Yes. Yes, Cynthia? Um, so because the books that are being put into the book sale are from deaccessioned library books, if they are left over from the sale, do the trustees have to vote to recycle any leftovers because they were purchased with town funds? How does that work? I think that we could simply um, at the August meeting, we could simply um, declare them surplus property. And once we do that, we can dispose of them. Uh, the town the town would be thankful for us disposing of yes. them. <laughs> um, okay. So we, we just, uh, someone remind me, uh, I'm in old business in the August meeting, and we'll just take a vote to declare them surplus property, unless you want to do it right now. Let's, yeah, let's do Why it. We, I make okay. a motion. Uh, to declare the um, the books the that would be in books. the excess books, the, the books that will be in the book sale, um, and the ones that remain from the book sale that aren't sold as surplus property. Is there a second? Second. Okay. And we need to take a roll call vote. I vote aye. Aye. Okay. Aye. 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 Okay. That's just standard on a Zoom meeting. Okay, terrific. Anything else on that? We get a nice little bump in general donations. <laughs> um, yeah. I did have another question. So Cindy, with th at the very end of your um, reports, it talks about the visits are still down. Um, are they down from 2020? Because at that point we were already into the pandemic and the curbside pickup or are they down from two years ago? How can you clarify those numbers? Do you mean the circulation numbers or the actual people coming into the library? Um, well, I'm looking, so circulation numbers, I guess circulation numbers is one of the things I'm confused about because right. it's down because we're doing curbside pickup. Right. So, um, the circulation numbers for June of of last fiscal or for June of 2020 were 184 items circulated, and that's because at that time we were only open for doing curbside pickup. Okay. Um, but this year, because we were able to open fully reopen in June, we've had 933 items circulate for this June. Okay. This past that, June. That's just a look. Yeah, a little bit uh, difficult wording there. Oh, I'm sorry. I can, yep. with help, I can correct the wording. <clears throat> okay. Just, uh, move the parent, move the second parentheses all the way down to pick up after the word okay. pick. Okay. And that will. I that just will, uh, corrected it on my paper so I can correct it for next time. Okay. Okay. And then um, curbside pickups. A few patrons are still requesting it, which is fine, but. The majority of our patrons are so thankful that they get to come back in the library and browse. They're just so happy. And that makes Rebecca and I happy too. And that makes the library happy. Is 147 a good number? I think it is considering that was just for, for about a month. Okay, perfect. And I'm sure it will go, start to go up as summer's coming and we're getting busier. Oh, there was one other thing I forgot that I was so excited about. For the first time in six years, we got the Frontier Summer Reading List and we actually got a new patron because of the Frontier Summer Reading List. This is the very first time ever 
he came in with his mom and his little brother and he registered for a library card so that he could check out one of the books on the Frontier Summer Reading List. And I was just so excited about that because we actually got a teenager into the library and they got a library card. Excellent. That's good. Okay. Um, does that answer your question, Cynthia, that you have? Yeah. Okay. And um, the last line where you say no curbside or browsing past 6 p.m. We're still closing at six o'clock. I wasn't yep. sure if we should go yep. back to one to eight. Um, the longest I think we could do is possibly be till seven because I still have the statistics that go way back showing that from seven to eight, nobody really comes in. Why don't we just keep the hours the way they are right okay. now? Because we're still um, we're still not out of the pandemic, so. Um, mm -hmm. And this better. satisfies for evening hours. It satisfies right. those yep. requirements. Okay. Perfect. Good. Perfect. Yes. Okay. Anything else on Cindy's report? I okay. think Bob has a question. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I just wanted to go circle back around to the book sale. Um, when do you need volunteers for those days? All day um, or morning? If you could give an hour or two of your time, but any time between like on Sunday nine to about four, on Saturday between about ten and three. Okay, let me work on that, and I will. E should I just email you? Sure, that'd be great. I can do. Okay, let me. Sure. Yeah, let me work on that, and um, I will. As I figure that out, as I get closer, I'll let you know. Thank you, Bob. Yeah, thank you. And there's, I forgot to include it on my report because one of the trustees did ask me to include it. Um, the last MailChimp that I sent out, we had an 83% open rate. Oh my good. That's good. As that someone who does marketing, good. I have to tell you, that's not just good. That is good. astronomical. Most people are happy with a 25 to 35% open rate is considered very, very good and gets high marks. So that kind of open rate is basically pretty much unheard of unless you're starting a new business or you're someone like Beyonce. I will never be Beyonce. <laughs> well, <laughs> don't That's, say- no. I know that is also very good news. So it's not just good, it's absolutely fantastic. Yes. Cindy, do all trustees um, get the MailChimp? I believe so. Hmm. I can double check tomorrow. I'm can, you, can you double check and make sure that everyone is on, every trustee is on the list for that? Sure. Okay, thank you. All right, ready to move on? Okay, Jim. ADA compliance project. I'm sure you have plenty to say. Yes, I do. I What I wanted to do is for the benefit of Cynthia and Bob, I just wanted to briefly do the timeline since this whole thing began and where we are right now. And it won't take very long. Sure. Uh, in the fall of 2018, uh, I met Margot Jones, the architect at a book fair at the library. And Larry Ashman happened to be there as well. Um, we both asked her if she would perhaps just take a quick look inside the library to see if there was any possibility of putting in a limited use elevator and handicapped bathrooms. Uh, she agreed, she came in, we gave her a quick uh, tour. And uh, at the conclusion of that, it was a 10 minute meeting. Uh, we asked for a proposal for a feasibility study um, and we received the same within two weeks. Um, the the cost of the feasibility study was $7,500. The trustees voted to use the DUDA funds to fund the $7,500 for the feasibility study. Um, we next uh, grew into the, uh, a full architectural study and Margo told us that would be about $20,000. Um, I appealed to the capital improvement for fund for funding and we were granted $35,000. I upped it 15,000 um, just for a little um, leverage. Um, and that would happen in the 2019 town meeting. Once we did that, we applied for a mass ADA grant, which was a very extensive study 
Uh, it took us several weeks to complete. We had to assess every single building in, in the town of Whateley for handicap accessibility. And through the efforts of uh, Keith Bardwell and Larry and uh, Brian Dominia, uh, Don Sluter and myself, uh, we assessed the buildings, we applied for it, and we were denied. And I was quite surprised at that because Brian Dominia and Domina had done a tremendous job of putting together a grant application. So that was disappointing. Uh, we then appealed to the capital improvement uh, fund. It was endorsed by the select board and the finance committee. And we asked for $150,000 for this project. That was a number given to us by the architect. She felt that that was a reasonable number and um, we will only know if it's reasonable once the bids come in. So we applied for that and it was all set to go. And then COVID happened and everything shut down. All of the funding for capital improvement was, was shelved. Um, and so we essentially just did nothing for a year. Um, at the conclusion, uh, actually this year, um, we applied for ADA funds again. And again, we were denied. Um, so we went to plan B and plan B was I applied to the uh, uh, Community Preservation Committee uh, yeah, for, the, for uh, funding. And I asked for $75,000 and I agreed to uh, commit $75,000 from the Duda Fund equaling 150. And that was advice from, from Brian. He thought that it would, it would probably go through town meeting very easily if we showed that we were committing some of our trust fund monies uh, to this project. Well, it passed. So we are now fully funded um, and we are, we are ready to send out bids. So at this time, uh, since we're beginning this project from the bidding, uh, uh, beginning of the bidding, um, it is my recommendation that we formalize a clerk or clerks to run this project. Formerly, we had a subcommittee. We did the subcommittee to get through uh, open meeting laws. We didn't want any violations there. So this essentially will solidify the management of this project. And I'm, I've asked Bob Klinger to assist me and I'm gonna ask for a motion on the floor. But before we do that, I just wanna explain what the clerk does if you're unaware. A clerk filters all of the information from the contractor to the director and the trustees. Conversely, if the trustees, the director have a request from the contractor, it goes through the clerk. That way there's one source of information, there's no misunderstandings, there's no, I said this, or you said that, it is clear, and it really must follow those rules specifically. This is time tested in Massachusetts. It's, uh, most municipalities require this for taxpayer funded projects. I'm not sure if it's on the books, but it is a, absolutely a good thing to have done. So anything regarding this project would filter through Bob or I, uh, Bob Klinger or I for, to either send it to the contractor or send it to the trustees. So at this point, I'd like to have a motion on the floor to appoint myself and Bob Klinger as the clerks of the works for this project. Uh, do we have a motion? I will make that motion. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay, discussion. Okay, then we'll put it to a vote. We need a, a roll call vote. Um, Bob Smith, aye. 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 How, how does this work when two people uh, are- uh, yeah, my, We don't have a quorum. Well, we, no, that's fine. They, they can both vote. Okay. Aye. <laughs> aye. Yeah, consider, considering the salary is so enormous. Um, <laughs> Jim, no. Usually, so if Jim votes for Bob and Bob votes for Jim, I think we're all set here. Okay. And I oh. agree, we do need a clerk of the works. So, okay. Jim, Thank continue. You, Jimmy. Nobody voted for chairman. Bob, there were two other um, items on new business. You want me to cover those real quick? Sure. Concerned? 
project. Um, one was the um, the preparation for the construction project. Uh, there was two things that we needed to prepare for. One was the rerouting of the Comcast line from the area uh, where the construction is going to be into Cindy's office. That has been completed. Uh, it's up and working. The only drawback is that the outside Wi-Fi is really weak. Yes. So I'm going to suggest that we buy some extenders uh, for $200. I've used these in my own house and other people have used them in their businesses. They work quite well. They just plug in the wall. It's all wireless and it will be able to cover the reading room, the back area, the parking lot. And as we grow into the downstairs after this project is ended, we can send a wire down there and cover all of that. It's $200 and I would recommend that we do that. Sheila, I mean, what is that like a booster or Wi-Fi booster? Yeah, it's an it's an extender, Sheila. Okay. Yeah, they work really well. It's called Euro E E R O, and I okay. I I bought I bought a set from my house because my house is long and it's tough to get the signal around and it's flawless. It works perfectly. Yeah, my house is terrible for signal. I would suggest Euro. I think that because Cindy recently got us listed in the state as a Wi-Fi hotspot where people can come to the library and use the Wi-Fi outside without yeah. even having to go in. I think we actually, it, it would really be in our in, best interest to get this extender because we've just gotten ourselves listed. So there's a map. Now it's not easy. There's a map that people would go to, to know, oh, I can just drive up to Waitley even on a Sunday when they're closed and, and grab some Wi-Fi. Yeah. Okay. So. Do we have a motion to purchase the extender? I know, would make a motion to purchase at least one, if not multiple. Okay, Jim, were you thinking to purchase two? Well, actually it comes, it comes with two multiples. Okay. So one of those at the base unit and there are two other units. Okay. okay. One in the reading room, one in the stack room, and it would hit everything outside. And, and what do they do? They pick up the signal and then yeah. amplify it somewhat? Sheila, it's actually a mesh system. One, one node talks to another, so you're fully covered. That's I don't understand why just moving that box made us lose all of that good signal. I don't know. Maybe it's the 10, 10 inch concrete walls. <laughs> I was going to say well, that might be it. Okay. You think yeah, that probably went be behind it? a wall. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So Cynthia moved and Sheila seconded. Um, and so we just need um, um, a vote. I, I vote aye. 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 Okay. It's unanimous. All right. And Maybe there was yep. another two. The other thing that two more things <clears throat> one was the um, relocation of the mini split down in the Duda room. And I've already talked to Richie Strong and we'll get his boys in there to move that. And it's going to go adjacent to the boiler room. Um, it's not gonna require a great deal of work because all of the plumbing is right there. Okay. So uh, oh. he's aware of that and we need to actually have to move that. So I'm, I will uh, have him do that as soon as possible. And I will meet him down there to make sure that it's what we want. All right. Yeah. The final thing I have is a, one of the little thing we've been discussing for a long time, and that's the stuff in the Bardwell room. That has got to be, and Bob, just for your information, the historical room houses our, our DMARC, our, our electrical panel, Comcast, phone lines, and you can't get to it. Building inspector has dinged us on it before. We have to get that stuff out of that room so that we can have unfettered access during the construction. The oil tank is also in there. So they do have a new building shed behind the town hall, and I'm we need to reach out to them to, to get that stuff moved. I'm not sure. Bob, is it time to redraft that letter? Well, I just I don't know if if uh, if we want to still go that route, or if if Cindy calling as the librarian saying we're we're up against it. We're about to start, and and if there's no action after that, then we go to the letter, trying to be as politic and polite and graceful as possible. Uh, but I will do uh, whatever you ask. I can draft another letter and and uh, send it around, or um, 
I, I just, I don't, I don't know how you want to proceed. I don't know what's the simplest, best. Jim, do you have a relationship at all with Adelia? Yeah, Bob, I, I can also reach out to Neil Abraham. I, I see him frequently and he's, I think he's in, really involved in that. Uh, and just let him know that we've got to get that out and see how it goes. Yeah, because I mean, maybe maybe if we just uh, reach out to some individuals and let them know that it really has got to go, we won't have to send a, a yeah. stern letter. Um, I don't know if that's the way you want to go or. Let me try Let me try the, the easy way first. All right. Okay. So okay. Jimmy, you're going to reach out? Yeah, I'll reach out to Neil. Okay. I see Thanks. him. Yeah, excuse us just for a moment. Now none of the electrical outlets are working downstairs. Do you have any idea which circuit numbers they were, Jimmy, down there? No electricals downstairs? Yeah, we had the dehumidifiers plugged in there and now the outlets are not working. Well, did it, maybe a breaker got tripped. Breaker That's got what tripped. I think. I could check it tomorrow, Sheila. I'm going down there anyway. Are you sure? Yeah, I'll check it out. You're okay. okay. Jimmy will come in the morning. Do you need to plug in though? I mean, yeah. you really want that stuff running. With the light. Yeah, he wants the fans running and the dehumidifiers running overnight. Yeah. And there's nothing. As long as that we won't trip breakers, we may have to run some extension cords somewhere to get on another circuit. But okay, I can see if I can find the uh, holiday tree extension cords. Yeah. Um, so it's they're not they're not working right now the dehumidifiers, right? Okay. No, because the outlets down there are not working. Um, that wall I just went down and looked when I showed him in. That wall from the window down and between the window and the bookcase is yeah. all bubbled. The yeah, whole thing. Yeah. Sheila, can you look in that panel right in the stack room and see if anything's been tripped? Yeah, Cindy just did actually. Is anything tripped in there? Or... I couldn't see if anything was tripped. This is. I don't know. Hello. He's just going to let you know what's happening. So I, I'm Adam with AJ Carpet Cleaning. And so I just did an extraction of all the water that's down there. Yeah. So it's still damp, but you know, it's significantly less wet than it was before. Okay. Um, so we're going to set up the dehumidifiers that are already here and then a couple fans to dry it out. Yeah. Um, and so that's what we were working on now is I just noticed that none of the outlets are working down there. Okay. And I checked the circuit breakers and it doesn't look like anything's tripped. It, did, any, did anything look like it's tripped in there? No. No, huh? And none of them are, are switched, are they? I don't think so. No. This is what I've got for an extension. Okay. Will this work? Um, yeah, depending on where the nearest like working one is, I'll go down, down there and take a look. Listen, at the, okay. the, the kitchen, the kitchen's got a twenty amp circuit. Yeah, okay. yeah and that's separate. Okay. Okay. Yeah, check the right. chairs on the like, right side as you walk. Yeah. Okay. There's the Um. Let me see what this gets me, and then um. Okay. Yeah, they were not. They were actually running. Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's always something. Well, Thank this is cer certainly a different kind of meeting than we've had in the past. <laughs> okay. Never Jim, let it be said that I don't make life interesting. Yeah. <laughs> um, you got anything else, Jim? No, that's, let me see. That's, um, oh, just a comment on, on the shelving and the, I think I mentioned this earlier, but for, for Bob's edification, um, Bob, we, we didn't, we had a problem with accessibility in our stack room. That's the, the room uh, to the uh, to the north. Yeah. Uh, not meet ADA compliance of 36 inches um, and five feet for a radius on a turnaround. So we brought in the young lady from um, MBLC from the state and she gave us a suggestion that we relocate two stacks, um, eliminate them and put get mobile stack units and put them into the main reading room. I use them over in the Hadley Library. They're attractive. They'll hold the entire collection that we, so we're not eliminating anything. We're just relocating it. And that's, and that's a pretty key statement. We are not eliminating, only relocating. So we're probably going not, not going to do that until the elevator project is in and we're ready for a certificate of occupancy. 
Okay. Gotcha. I'm assuming there's a price associated with that, and that's fact going to get factored into the budget. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Cindy is doing some research on the costing cost of okay. that mobile unit. Yeah, and okay. we also once we remove the old units, and this young lady told us that uh, they can recycle those. Other li they'll put it out on a on a, a bulletin and other libraries, and they'll come in and take them out for us. Okay. We won't have to do that because they're heavy and they're all bolted to the floor. Okay. And then we've already discussed um, before your arrival of putting down plank flooring because that's asbestos tile in there. We want to cover that up. Gotcha. Yeah. Jim, one of the one of the things I wanted to cover was just you had mentioned some of the uh, the mass um, grants that you applied for. Yeah. For this, and I just. I don't know if now is the time to get into the, the weeds about those or if maybe you and I talk. I, I don't want to be inappropriate. I would just like to understand um, a little better as I get into this, what was what avenues have been sought and which have been successful and which haven't for different grants and, and what people typically do um, for different grants and things like that. I have some experience in those areas and would be happy to happy to dive down those rabbit holes. Um, I just want to understand, I think we might be a little late on this one, but maybe not. Well, Bob, you probably and I can talk offline on this one. The other option for granting was a Mass Library Association and you go on a waiting list. And the waiting list now is like five to seven years. Okay. That's no, I saw that on some of the other libraries, some of the other local libraries that are getting stuff granted yeah. um, that are showing up in the newspaper. But uh, I'd be, I'd be happy to sort of dig into that and, right. and explore different things and, and take, take a little bit of a longer view. Um, again, I don't, I, I, you know, first meeting, I don't, I don't want to, jump in too far, but um, if it is a five, seven year wait, yeah, the sooner you get in line. Well, I agree because there's other grants, I mean, aside from this whole ADA for reconfiguring for uh, fixtures, we may be able to buy fixtures that would serve us from another reconfiguration. Okay. Yeah. I got two bands. Okay. Uh, my uh, suggestion is that you gentlemen discuss this yeah, and yeah. in yeah. August you can let us know um, what your discussion led to. Yep. Is that okay? That'd be great. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much for the help. Sometimes they yeah. Yeah. And um, Sheila, I can check in with you. What's the best way to reach you about some of the other grants, just so I can familiarize myself with them? Um. Probably if you want to check out the state website, MBLC. Okay. Um, and there's also, we are a part of this as well because of, because of the DUDA fund, uh, the Community Foundation of Western Mass. But uh, MBLC might be able to come up with something, hopefully, without a two or three or four year wait. <clears throat> to help us through that reconfigure. Yeah. Well, there's just there's a there's a lot of money rolling around in the yeah, in in government coffers right now and there is. I would be happy to go fishing. Good. Oh, that'd be yeah. lovely. Just um, any help you can give us, Bob. Right. Yeah. And also it's it's also important that the town administrator be involved because we are, after all, the town's library and the, um, the town of Waitley, we are the trustees of the library, but the town of Waitley the, is the fiduciary entity. Okay. Well, and, want, yep. and Bob, thank you for that because I, I, I'm not familiar with the hierarchy and how yeah. everything. Yeah. So yeah. please feel free to point me in the right direction. Absolutely. Um, but I'm sure when you talk with James, you'll you'll find out a lot. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yep. All right. We're moving on. Um, I don't think there's an update on the status of library procedures subcommittee. 
at this point. Okay. We'll, okay, and uh, I don't know if you've seen the newly planted holiday tree, but it's a beautiful tree. And as I said before, Jim is taking really good care of it. Um, it's green. It's green and it's lovely <laughs> and it's going to grow. What does it grow? 21, 21 to 36 inches a year or something like that. It grows yeah. rapidly. It, it, it's not going to be as big as the other one that we took out. It's only going to probably okay. pop up maybe 16 to 18 feet now. That's it. Still going to be beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, latest friends committee meeting. Yes. Cindy, do you want me to give that? Yes, please. Okay. So, friends, um, we've gone over the interesting smell that we came up with. Um, they would, the friends would like to know when in-person events are going to start happening so that they can schedule to have their insurance be activated because they are this year taking out a policy which is being subsidized by the insurance company in order to cover them from any liabilities from in-person events. So they just want a date from us as to when that policy should go into effect. So basically they wanna know when in-person stuff is gonna be happening. Is it, is it still, it is still possible to do in-person stuff. We would just have to set up the chairs accordingly. Cindy, has that changed at all, been updated by the governor? No, I double checked with Fran today and he said that it's, oh, if we are comfortable with doing in-person events, we can do in-person events, but that we need to follow the most recent guidelines that we, the town of Waitley have put out as well as the most recent guidelines that the mass.gov has on, under their COVID site. Um, it was also recommended that if it's something that is held inside, that we do a contact, a log of anyone who were to come on the off chance that we might have to do a con that there might have to be a contact tracing afterwards. And similar to the library where you can, you have, even if you're vaccinated or not, that you're still required to wear a mask that in-store events, a mask would need to be required. Um, if it's outside, I guess making sure everyone's spaced far enough apart, I don't know. Um, okay, well, it appears as though Deerfield has, has gone sort of full bore on outdoor concerts. They had one last week, um, and I think they have five, four more scheduled. Um, on the Fridays? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Um, and they do theirs outside. Um, so, I mean, at some point we have to, is there is there anything in the offing of an outdoor program that you wanted, Cindy? I have, um, next, in August, I have Tim Van Eggman coming to do a multi-generational program it's like young whippersnappers and old fogies or something like that that's the title that he had that's his title of his program and that could be outside um Anna Sobel is coming to do her, a puppet show and that could be outside um but I haven't really scheduled a lot of the way in in-person programming yet because I wasn't sure how comfortable people would be with coming to in-person events um, be inside or outside. So well, I think I think that the Deerfield one the other night was uh, I saw on Facebook some live recordings. It looked like they they had quite a few people there. Yeah. Um. So I mean, should we just should we just vote to okay that we can start planning them as of August first? Just outside ones. Just or yeah. I, I, think I, feel, I would feel better if we only did the outside yeah. ones. I would hate to be the town building that started something. No, I know. I yeah. Know. What do you think, Cindy? Outside okay? That is fine. And with all due respect, Deerfield is the slightly larger library than us. They have more staff. So if it this wasn't is... The, I think it's the whole town of Deerfield. It's... Oh. it's 
like their yeah. rec committee or something. But but I was just using Deerfield as the example that they've that they are having in person okay. concert type events. But so. still, we're but we are a staff of two, so if it's a library event, that's fine. I am going to strongly encourage that if the friends want to have their summer concerts, that perhaps they could assist with they actually should. being here and helping to make sure everything is set up the way it's supposed to be. Okay, can I, I just, I wanna say something. And that is that my wife and Jim's wife and I and Jim, are always there um, since the past couple of years anyway. Um, and I don't know who you're referring to because there really are only three really active members of the friends and sometimes four and sometimes five. Um, and so it just tweaks me a little bit to hear that because I think that the I think Katie does a tremendous amount for the library. I think Jim does a tremendous amount for the library. And this, um, the idea that we have to somehow um, caution the friends about their role is starting to grate on my nerves. Um, and I need to say that because it's a different group of friends now. Things have changed, we've moved on and we need to keep moving on. And the only way we're gonna do that is if we stop these veiled um, accusations that people aren't involved. So I've said my piece, forgive me. And I'm gonna chime in with that as well. Um, we've had a year of a pandemic, so there really hasn't been a lot, but I do know that for the year before that at pretty much every concert and every town hall event, Cindy was greeting, Cindy was setting up, Cindy was cleaning up, mopping the floors per Neil's, you know, over at the town hall. Um, she was walking the donation jug around here. And it seemed as though it was assumed that that was her duty or her job um, when it was indeed a friend's sponsored event. So, you know, I'm not saying that she's overdoing, but those hours are certainly you know, hours she would not have needed to be here. And I understand there's a small group and I think we've all as part of the subcommittee tried to push that recruitment issue. Um, I think they're working on that a little bit now, maybe on, you know, pamphlet or uh, on something. And, and I know they're working on it, which is why we have all, you know, I've been there for a lot of book sales. I've been here for a lot of events too. Um, she's just pointing out that if it's a friend sponsored event, you know, she would like the help it, just as she has been there for all of those events. Okay. Um, so are we going to um, set a date certain for allowing outdoor events to occur? or do you not want to? I would say immediately. Okay. No, I don't think we should set it for immediately because they're going to start paying. If we set it for immediately, then they need to start paying the insurance. So I think we do it for when we have an event that's scheduled. And Cindy, this um, multi-generational event is scheduled for August what? August 14th with a rain date of the 28th. And that is First event that's scheduled. In that August. is the first event that would be scheduled. That would be an in-person event. Okay. Is that a library event or a friends event? I it's thought I sponsored by the Waitley Cultural Council, um, and the grant was given through the library. Does the friends sponsor anything? I believe the friends are paying twenty-five dollars. Paid for that, would you? Or a little bit more. I don't remember. Okay. Um, so, were there any concerts? Any concerts scheduled before or after? That? The only concert that has officially been scheduled that I said would be tentative because I didn't know at the time was TJ and the Peepers. 
So it, I would have to then work to try to find additional bands that would want to come for okay. a full concert, summer concert. When is I'm trying to see if I can find out how much. I know the friends are helping to pay for Tim. Um, so that would be, so basically be marketed as an event at the library sponsored by the Cultural Council, co-sponsored or sponsored by the friends here at the library. Okay. So to get back to our original question, I, I would like to propose that we tell the friends they can do this um, insurance uh, and begin it when we start having events. So what I want to clarify with you, Cindy, is I don't want us to vote on something in August if you think that there's going to be something in July. Um, and so I guess, I mean, we're already in halfway through July. So right. maybe point there's there's nothing that i have scheduled in july yet i'm pretty sure katie's already sent the check to the insurance company so we should be bound as soon as they collect that she uh, sent it off last week i Three. thought mary ellen asked her to hold off on that until they knew for certain mary ellen did ask her to hold off on that so hopefully katie didn't send it but that's neither here nor there that's between those two. I'm out of that loop. At this point, what I'm trying to get is a date that I can tell that I can go back and tell them from the trustees. And so, do we want to vote for the first scheduled event, which is August 14th? What they don't want to do is they don't want to waste their money buying insurance for a period of time when there will be no events. Do any uh, of the state guidelines change as of August? Isn't there an August 1st deadline for something? Not when they totally open, but I think that was another, like, you know, landmark. And you, yeah, you might, you might be right, but I don't know whether Waitley intends to change. Yeah. The Board of Health and the Select Board intend to change. So well, it sounded like Fran said at our discretion and, you know, outside, as long as we followed the town's recommendations. Okay. Um, yeah. Well, so what would be an appropriate date then um, to open for and to give time for the uh, insurance to take effect? Maybe August, if the first event is the 14th, maybe a week before that, just to make sure it's fully. Okay, okay. business. So August 1st is a Sunday. Right. August 6th, Friday, August 6th, it's a business day? Yes. Yeah. We okay on that? That looks good. Okay. I will tell them. So that was item number one. Item number two is they requested, we discuss if it would be okay for the friends to use the library email list. And so this is not a list that we would give to them because it is proprietary to the library as a private email list. But if we would be, if they would be permitted to add some of their promotional stuff, either for events they're sponsoring and or to try and drum up some more friends so that they can, they can grow their group and have a more substantial number of members um, to, and add that onto one of the monthly emails that Cindy sends out mm -hmm. from the library. So are people okay with that being done? The friends had an email list. They where don't. that's gone, I don't know, but they had an email they contact list. They have access to it and they don't know where it is. So um, when people signed up for the MailChimp listing the monthly events at the library, they understood that's what they were signing up for. Right. And I guess I'm going to speak as a patron now. I didn't sign up to be solicited for funds. So that that's my feeling. That's I mean, what, yeah. what happened with the mailing list, the email list? 
They didn't want to do a mailing, a physical mailing, because they say it's too expensive. And in, in the past, they've had a very poor ROI on that, a return on investment of the yeah. effort and time it took to do a, a physical mailing. And so what they wanted was a targeted group. And that's why they were approaching us. But I also think that it's valid what, what the point that Sheila brought up, that this was, you know, this was a mail list specific to library and library events. So while it would be okay to mention, oh, there's this event of this multi-generational um, storyteller coming in August that is sponsored by the Cultural Foundation and the Friends of the Waitley Library. It's a different thing to say, and you know, if you're interested in the Friends, please contact this. You know, this is how much it is, and you know, please contact this place or person. I, I think it's a very slip, I think it's a slippery slope is, I'm gonna be honest with you because asking for permission is something that has to be done. The, the European Union is much more stringent about it than we are, but we are going down that road. And I don't know that anyone in Waitley would get really, really angry, but if you send an unsolicited, we certainly couldn't do an individual email for them because that would be, um, I think the fine, the last time I looked into it was like over $16,000 per complaint. If someone complained about a fine, an unsolicited um, email that they received, I don't know that people in Whaley would actually go that far, that road, but I'm just saying that, you know, it is something to take into consideration because they're, the friends are not who the people who signed up for the library list, they didn't sign up for both lists, potentially. Can they have a, or are they working on a brochure or pamphlet? I mean, we should literally put one right at the circulation desk. Next month, they're gonna try and vote on and decide on what dues would be. And they recognized at the at this meeting last week that they need two kinds of friends. They need the friends who are just gonna write a check, whatever that is, whether that's $15 a year or $20 a year or whatever. And they also need the kind of friends who are going to go to events and put out the collection jar and greet people and pick up people's trash if they leave it behind and tell people where they can park um, in our fabulous, you know, new town parking out front, et cetera, et cetera. So they need, they need to bolster their ranks because as Bob mentioned just a minute ago, Bob Smith, they are diminished in terms of their numbers who are active. And so it can't be the same four or five people doing, trying to do everything. They need to have more active members who will do one or two events a year. They need to have people who also are willing to write a check every year, you know, and just be a regular friend and be, and have it at such a level that that's a sustainable thing. So they're, that has not been determined. So there, there's no brochure because they haven't even made a decision about what it would, it would cost. They have been given information about what other libraries charge. They have talked about different levels of membership. Um, so I think that it's something that's definitely on their minds, but no, they haven't proceeded to formulate anything at this point. Um, so, Long answer to your short question. Okay. I'm sorry. It's just I wondering about the sometimes the continuity and, and you know where some of these things went to when there was more active members. Um, I don't know. I have, if it would help, an older mailing list, Jimmy, from way back when. Um, that people did include their emails on, and this was specific to the friends, but it would have to be, you know, gone through um, a little bit because I'm sure there's people that have left town or, in fact, left Earth. Um, it, it's not a decade old, but it's. 
probably from 2010 or 12, maybe. Well, that's a decade now. Yeah, you're right. It is. Um, and and I guess then the other there. question is, is, is there an active friend's email address that people would, wouldn't be uh, flagged as spam? That's the other part of it in rebuilding an email list. I don't know what their old email was that they used and if there's still access to that or not. They do have an email, yeah. Do Which they have access would... to it? I believe somebody yeah. has access to it. So anyway, so uh, do we want to vote on whether we would give them access emailing list I mean it's what I'm hearing I think there's there's some significant cons to doing that and um, but I think we need to does anyone else want to jump into this discussion mm -mm. We don't have uh, any other discussion and we don't have a motion on the floor. Okay. So we can continue on and just, uh, you can re report whoever is turned, it is for the next friends meeting, you can just report that um, we took no action. Okay. Um, and then moving on, uh, they're, they're, the friends will be helping also to fill time slots for the fall book sale and as cindy mentioned earlier they will she will be doing a um an event friday evening to try and encourage people to become a friend so they have early access to the sale the friends also recently purchased uh, museum passes for the eric carl museum mass mocha and historic deerfield and that is more or less what went hap what happened at the meeting that I have to report. Okay. Thanks, Cynthia. Uh, thank you very much. All right, so an update on Rebecca joining our staff, Cindy. Yes, she's doing wonderful. Good, have you been uh, training her thoroughly in all of the things that you were training Emma in? I haven't gotten that far yet because I'm still training her on some of the, on what she should, what her role is but she has done a couple of book orders. Okay, it's never too early to begin that training. I know you just went through it, but um, we, we gotta make sure that nothing happens again, like what happened at the beginning of the pandemic. Okay. Okay. And you're also Does anybody dis disagree with, with me on that? I, I agree hundred percent. Okay. All right. Um, and then update on that sign kiosk repair. Cindy, have you been in touch with Sean? I'm just waiting for a time when he's able to come and put the sign back up. The weather hasn't exactly been cooperating yeah. with us. And, and it's not going to. Yeah. Sean, Sean actually just got back from some family related stuff in Michigan. So um, we've had, I mean, this is just an aside, but we've had a lot of family um, stuff happen this year with his family in the Midwest. So, um, it's looking gorgeous. It's going to be very, very sturdy. And he really has tried hard to make it um, in the mode of what had been there. Perfect. Okay. Is there any other old business anybody needs to discuss? Just on the sign part, Jimmy, if we encumbered that money from last year toward this, do we have to have that in or with a June 30th invoice date? Oh, it got carried on to FY22. So that's going to just carry again. Okay. I didn't know if it carried again. Okay. So moving on to new business, the custodial service discussion, we don't really need to discuss anything because our custodian is back, um, is back to his uh, regular operations. He was there today um, working very hard to help um, ameliorate the situation downstairs. By the way, did Adam get some electricity going down there? Yes. Was it a trip breaker or? I couldn't find a tripped breaker. So I don't know. He's if... plugged into that surge protector and then into the kitchen, I think. I don't okay. know if the wiring got shorted out because of the water. 
he sucked everything up he could and he'll be back to do the clean smelling soapy shampoo okay. once okay. it dries. All right. Um, I sent all of you a copy of a photo, a photo, copy, photo of uh, a letter from Matt regarding the, um, the, the handrail of the stairway from by the circulation desk into the basement storage area. And you've all had a chance to see that. Um, and Jim, do you want to uh, say anything about, we, we talked a little bit about it today. I don't know when that was done, but um, there clearly should be a full grasp around a round handrail all the way down on both sides. And unfortunately they put two inch foam insulation, rigid insulation, which prevents you from grabbing it. Um, and it's on both sides and it extends down approximately three feet. The rest of it's open. Um, yes, it is a violation. We've never been dinged for it. We've had many, many inspections on whether they just missed it. Um, it is employee only. It's not open to the public. Um, it should be fixed, but I'm not going to put it as a top priority at the moment. To repair it, you'd have to cut, cut out the insulation, which is more than likely glued to what's ever behind it. It's pretty messy. And my recommendation would be, let's get this construction project behind us and we can tackle something like this. Anybody else have a comment? I agree with Jim, um, unless you rip that, that you know, foam board out of there. And if you extend the rails, then you're gonna walk into them anyway. <laughs> moving, the, moving the foam board is very messy because it's all glued. Yep. And as soon as, as soon as the lift is in, um, employees will be able to use the lift to go downstairs. Yeah. yeah. I mean, so, you're still going to need to have access to the railing handles hand, to be able to hold onto a railing for those who choose to walk because it is going to be still an egress um, in and out of the building. So, correct, Jim? Well, it's one of the egresses, yeah. but it, this, is, this is pretty much employee only. Yeah, but you still need to be able to hold on to a railing. But I think I think just that if we could wait on it. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. So we're agreeing that we're we're we we have it in our list of priorities. Right. Our to do list. Yeah. All right. We did. So the who's going to let the custodian know that it was discussed and that it's on the list of things <laughs> that will be done? Yeah. His supervisor. Okay. Okay. Um, that's, we're your supervisor, you're his supervisor, and everything sort of flows downhill. All right. Um, reconfiguration of shelving for collection. We don't have to talk about that because we have already talked about it. Rerouting of Comcast wiring is all taken care of. Um, programming, we just accidentally did that before, correct? Mm-hmm. So I think we've completed our agenda. If it, does anybody have any other new business? Yeah. Well, this is sort of semi-old business is I had said that at our next meeting, I would come to you with a uh, job, a proposal for a job description for a youth services representative on the board. And I, in classic fashion at the 11th hour, sent out a PDF that has that, propo um, that pro a proposed job description so that we can look at getting candidates. And basically since next month is August, um, I'm hoping that we can get somebody in one of the students in Waitley in place. So because I sent it out so late, I'll just give you a quick overview of what it is. But um, the qualifications would be someone who has an appreciate, this is for a teen member of our board who would be non-voting um, because they wouldn't be elected and they wouldn't potentially even be a, an adult on the board. but we were thinking about getting an adult or a teen member. So the qualifications would be that they have an appreciation of the library. They have a desire to make the library a better place for teens of Waitley and surrounding communities. They're willing to be a team player and they are a resident of Waitley or, and or they have one parent who lives in Waitley because there's obviously a lot of blended families these days. So, um, the responsibilities would be to work with the elected board of trustee members and the library director to oversee the library as we are all doing at this meeting, help establish policies and plans, especially ones focused on teens. 
identify and advocate ways the library can may better serve teens in our community, assist with library public relations specific to teens and provide input on policies and plans which potentially would affect teens. Their duties would be to attend the, and participate in these monthly meetings, serve on any committees that would be pertinent, especially or in, and or impact teens, participate in fundraising activities, such as the book sale that was discussed earlier and visit and use the library. Like we'd want them to be an active library user. Um, skills and ability would be the ability to work with people, the ability to think long-term and the ability to consider what is best for the library and the teens who use it. So that is basically a rough proposal because we need to show this to the school. I think we're going to go through frontier. Is that correct, Bob Smith? Yep. Yep. So we yep. wanted something that we could go that was concrete, that we could say, this is what we're looking for. This is what it's going to entail. Are there students that, you know, this would apply to? So you know, we're not necessarily looking for people from Sunderland unless they have one parent living in Sunderland and one parent living in Waitley. Right. I, um, I just have, uh, I guess, issue with the first two bullets um, of responsibilities. Okay. Uh, I think that we could be more general as the last um, bullet is in, in terms of um, providing input. Um, when you use the word oversee in that um, first bullet, it's, I don't believe that it's, we have, our, we are the ones that are supposed to oversee the board of trustees, the elected town officials. Uh, and we need to make it clear that this person is non-voting and is offering uh, input and that kind of assistance. I don't like the word oversee there because it just seems as though we're giving that person supervisory, which we do not have the, the right to give away our, um, sure. as a trustee, I think that we should, we should probably want to rework that one. Mm -hmm. And then, um, again, help establish policy. I, I think it would be better to say, uh, provide input on uh, policy and plans, especially ones which are focused on teens. Okay. Anything else that people that jumps out of people as being inappropriate for this job description we're putting together? I, I, I realize you guys have had zero time to look it over. I'm sorry about that. I did take a look at it. I guess my, my thought is um, I'm seeing what you're trying to do with creating a job description. So we'd have something to give to, you know, the librarian or the, English teacher or civics teacher, whatever it may be. Is it a little formal? I mean, does it sound like too much if we were to show that to a teen? You know, is there too much involved in this? Yeah, so there may be, there, it may be way too much. I haven't had a teenager in a number of years. <laughs> Um, so, uh, my teen speak was never fluent and it is definitely rusty. <laughs> um, but this is just like, this is just a place to start with. So maybe what yes. we do is everyone sort of had the first go round and maybe I tweak it and I come back in August. I just want to be able, you know, I know that once August hits, we're going to be you know, school will be starting essentially. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I can, uh, I can take a copy of this and um, uh, go visit my friend who is the librarian, Zoe uh, Keenan, um, and just say, look at this. Does this make sense to you? What, how, what would you like to see? How, how would this go over with the current that, uh, juniors and seniors? That would be very helpful because I, this is, this was never my strong suit was teens. And so that would be awesome if somebody okay. who is more directly involved with them. I'll call Zoe tomorrow and-, and um, Do you want me to send you a Word doc or just is the PDF fine? The PDF is fine. I printed it out already. I can print out another copy. No okay. Problem. All yeah. right. Thanks, Bob. That'd be very helpful. Sure. Okay. Let's table it until next month and get a little bit more feedback and I'll, I'll think about it more. But I know that I'd said I was gonna do it and- 
classic me. I left to the last minute. So. Is there any other any other new business? Just a follow up on Cindy's um, um, report where she asked about closing. There are no closings scheduled at this moment, and there will not be any until a contractor is hired and they have submitted a scope of work on how they intend to uh, deal with patrons and staff. So I will let you know. But right now there is nothing scheduled and we do not need to notify anybody. Okay, is Margo sending out the bids or dealing with that part of it, that yes. process? Yep. Okay. Okay. Any idea when those will go out? I'm sorry? Is any idea when those will go out? I've been, um, Annoying her. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. No, I didn't know if I missed that part of the discussion when the uh, steamer guy came in. Sorry. Okay. Um, it does strike me. Um, this is a... what? Sorry. It does strike me that um, after an election, generally there is a reorganization of committees and so on and so forth. Um, and I have kind of ignored that and I apologize. I want you to think that um, in some Trumpian way, I'm attempting to continue my <laughs> dynastic service as chair. Your but mad you reign. Certainly, you are certainly <laughs> welcome to uh, appoint a new chair um, unless you want to continue, whatever, whatever you like. I want to continue with you, Bob. You're doing a wonderful job. I agree. I if wholeheartedly you're agree. Do the job. I, I'm I'm certainly willing to do it. Yep, absolutely. Okay. We can let okay. the dynasty go for a wee bit longer. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I, All right. I don't feel like I have enough experience to say anything, so I'm just going to let it ride. <laughs> Very good. So I need a motion to adjourn. Motion. Second. Second. And I'm sure there won't be anybody saying. That. Good night, everyone. I'm going to stop recording and end the meeting. Okay. Thank you.